this first episode, we travel to the Catalina Festival at Rathmines, just south of Newcastle. Then through Sydney Harbour, turning north to watch the solar eclipse in the Daintree, North Queensland, and finishing off our trip at the very tip of Australia. The seaplanes we'll be using on this adventure are the Sea Ray. two-seater kit-built amphibian aircraft are great for filming from and getting into tight landing spots. The Super Petrol, a production-built two-seater amphibian aircraft. This lightweight aircraft has great economy and good performance figures. The Lake Buccaneer, a very popular four-seat amphibian aircraft. Unfortunately out of production these days, the Buccaneer can carry a large load of cargo and is the fastest aircraft in our group. The Sea Ray can hold a reasonable amount of luggage. Keeping the plane under the maximum takeoff weight is our biggest challenge. With all the gear packed away, just the final checks to go. We're just going to do the walk around on the Sea Ray. This is my aircraft, so I'm pretty good at doing this walk around. I've done it a few times now. We normally start in one direction and work anti clockwise around. We've got our light for our landing light. This is our floats at the side, stop the wings from dipping into the water. the engine we'll just give them a couple of turns over just to make sure it's got compression on each stroke so we'll give it about normally around about 15 to 20 turns check all the bolts around the propeller make sure nothing's coming loose that all looks good Quite often just crawl right under the back here and have a good look around here because it's a very important part of the aircraft. If anything goes wrong here you're in a lot of trouble. So spending a couple of extra minutes just checking it can save your life one day. Inside here we can check our gear. Again our micro switches, wiring, bolts, anything that may have come astray that all looks good and then I quite often get to the front of the plane again and I just take a minute just to think if there's anything that I've changed or touched and just make sure that the plane is ready for you to fly it and that's our walk around clear prop Finally we're airborne, leaving Redcliffe just north of Brisbane. We pack south over water to our overnight destination of Tiona, which is just south of the township of Foster on the New South Wales coastline. Flying 1,000 feet, we certainly get a good view of the Gold Coast skyline passing Q1 Australia's tallest residential high rise. With a 20 knot tailwind, we certainly make good time to Tiona. Having a ground speed of 100 knots, which is equivalent to 180 kilometres an hour, we soon find ourselves flying over the beautiful town of Foster. X ray Whiskey Whiskey is past the 7 mile mark, uh, over water 1000 feet. X ray Whiskey Whiskey, frequency change approved. Finding some smooth water close to the shoreline out of the 20 knot wind, we complete our first water landing of the trip. The Sundowner Tiona Tourist Park is the ideal place for us to overnight, with all sorts of accommodation from camping, caravan sites to self contained bungalows. It's the perfect stop for a seaplane. Being able to land on the water and then taxi out to our accommodation, it doesn't get much better than this.
After a good night's rest, our destination today is Rathmines. With all the pre-flight checks done, we're off. This will be a short leg, approximately an hour and a half. The tricky part is transiting the control airspace around Newcastle. With no problems getting clearance through this area, we arrive at our destination. Arriving at our destination, I can't help but think what it would have been like to be flying Catalinas into the base back in the war time. It sure would have been an interesting time for young pilots. The Rathmines RAAF base reached its peak strength of almost 3,000 RAAF personnel in 1944 to 1945. A considerable number of Catalinas and their crew were lost, 32 cats in total and 330 brave crew. The festival also aims to raise money to assist the Catalina Flying Memorial to restore the Catalina purchased from Portugal in 2008 and establish an open air hangar museum on the Rathmine site. We were the first to arrive of the nine amphibian aircraft attending. There's a good mixture of aircraft from my plane, the Sea Ray, to the Super Petrol and the Lake Buccaneers. A huge crowd soon gathered as the main act was arriving. The Black Cat sure is an impressive aircraft as it emerges from the water. It was great to get up close and personal with the old wartime icon. It was soon our turn to impress with the formation flyover. Okay, ready to go. Lee McKean uniform golf, ready to go. Okay, number six is in the water, so ready when you guys are. Okay, Tango Zero Tango, first one is uh, going. Number six is rolling. Whoa. Woo. Number seven, Zulu Romeo up is rolling. Just up to your left and behind you, Vaughan. Number four. Come in a bit tighter, mate. A quick wave to the crowd. Is that all folks? I think that's all, yeah. So who's going to break away and who's coming back in? Number one, we're heading off right there. Number two, Lee Miriam Pearl, heading off as well. Number three, we're heading off as well. Number five, we're going to come back and land. Four is coming back to land. Ooh. Number seven is coming back in.
soon it was time to say goodbye as the pampered cat slips into the water. These old wool birds don't get a lot of air time these days and I'm sure she enjoyed spreading her wings today. Time for us to get going as well. Owning a seaplane has some great advantages and one of those advantages is Romeo 405 which is a flight path that seaplanes and helicopters are allowed to take over Sydney Harbour Bridge past the Opera House and out through the harbour. It sure makes a spectacular end for the day. We start heading north for the next part of our trip. Our plans are to meet up with the rest of the group at Great Keppel Island, just north of Rockhampton in sunny Queensland. So this will be a good time to introduce the group flying in company. In the three late Buccaneers, we've got Bill and Donna from Sydney, Ben and Vicky from Caloundra, John and friend Kerry from Jarvis Bay, south of Sydney. In the two Super Petrels we have Rowan flying solo from the Gold Coast and Vaughan and John flying from Melbourne. And in the two Sea Rays, Ross who has flown all the way from Adelaide and in my plane I have three people sharing different legs of the trip. My wife Cheryl flying the Rath Mines leg, Daniel who has joined me from Brisbane to the Daintree for the Eclipse and Mark who is accompanying me to the tip of Australia. Navigating north along the spectacular New South Wales coastline sure makes it easy for us to stay on track. All we have to do is keep the green on our left and the blue on our right. Cheryl even has time to send a few text messages. We decide to stop at the pretty town of Nambucca Heads for fuel and food and find a very accommodating boat ramp for our planes as well as some friendly locals who have offered us a lift up to the fuel station. After refueling the planes and our stomachs, okay. we're off again. Uh, yeah, this is going to be awful. Oh. You concentrate, I'll do the water. Woo! 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 <laughs> Fun me. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Ben, travelling in his Lake Buccaneer, catches up with us at Morton Island, just east of Brisbane. The Lake Buccaneer certainly has a little bit more speed than the sea rate. We decide to fly past the Tangle in Marex, which is an awesome sight from the air. Further north, we encounter Fraser Island. How can we resist a landing? We arrive at Great Keppel and the weather is perfect. However, Ross, flying from Adelaide, is having a tough time with the monsoon weather down south. We decide to stay at Keppel for an extra day to let Ross catch up and hope he doesn't bring the bad weather with him. Hearing Ross's plane overhead is a relief to all of us. Yeah, stand back. <laughs> the group is finally all together. Nice. Nice. The resort at Great Keppel has been closed for some years now and it is certainly showing it. The runway has tufts of grass growing through it two feet tall. Although the resort is closed, Keppel still has a variety of accommodation, from rental houses, cottages, cabin accommodation to permanent tents and camping sites. 
It certainly is a great feeling to have the group together for the first time. A few drinks, a lovely meal prepared by our hosts, was just the catalyst for a fantastic night. Leaving Great Keppel, we take the time to do an orbit around the island. Keppel is a stunning island and is one of the nicest islands you'll ever see. Speed's 40. Two knots of like a little bit more speed. About 60, 65. Here going up. destination now is the Daintree to watch the solar eclipse. Well Ross has done it, he's brought the bad weather with him, so we stop to refuel and wait for a few showers to pass by at Innisvale. Innisvale traffic, X-ray whiskey, whiskey is backtracking 1-4 with company, three seaplanes all together. Good to go. Good to go. X-ray whiskey, whiskey rolling 1-4, Innisvale. Innisvale is not far from our destination. A new plan is needed. We were hoping to land on the water at a place called Cow Bay where we'd booked accommodation. However, a water landing was out of the question due to the bad weather and our alternate strip we had picked at Cow Bay was closed due to some dispute. So our second alternate is Wonga Beach which is an airstrip we don't know a lot about. A new plan is put together. We leave the heavier Lake Buccaneers at Innisvale and take the more lighter and nimble Sea Ray and Super Petrol to Wonga Beach. The Lake Buccaneer guys hire a van and drive the rest of the way. Arriving at Wonga Beach, we find the airfield to be in good condition. A short drive and we arrive at our accommodation. Tomorrow is the big day of the total eclipse. That'll do. So here we are on the beach watching the eclipse with what I might say is a interesting crowd. Just before the total eclipse Ross does a low level fly over the beach as we are all waving madly. Ross has decided to continue north ahead of schedule as he has work commitments back in Adelaide. We had already planned to spend a couple of days exploring the Daintree. The next day we receive an email from Ross. Dear Eclipse Mob, what a day. We were so lucky with the weather. I hope you all enjoyed the experience as much as I did. It was fascinating to see all the people lined up along the beaches. I did a low pass along Wonga Beach. There must have been more than a thousand people on that beach alone. Everyone was excited and waving madly. I climbed to 7,000 feet and was beside one cloud, but had a clear view to the west. With just a couple of minutes to go, there is that weird sensation in that the sun seems to be bright, but it does not seem right, and there is no warmth in it. 
and then I could see this dark column appear in the west and loom up towards me. Then the sky in the west went very dark and I could see Jupiter sparkling. Then suddenly the sun went out. It was strange. It was quite dark, but the clouds around me had an odd glow to them. I think they were lit by reflected light from the distant horizon. It was a surreal and beautiful experience. I was literally shouting for the sheer joy of it. Ross. The next day we're getting ready to continue north and get a call from Keith Clark, the President of the Seaplane Pilots Association of Australia, who has been tracking our progress on our spot tracking devices, concerned about Ross. His spot tracking device hasn't moved for several hours in a remote area 80 nautical miles north of Weepa. We decide to get airborne and go look for our mate. We soon receive some devastating news. Hi Keith. Okay, hey, can you hear me okay? Yeah, can hear you fine. Just got airborne. Where are you heading? Uh, we're going to that roadhouse that Ross stopped off at. Oh, I'm sorry to inform you that we found the wreckage in Ross's plane and unfortunately he didn't make it. Yeah. Do, you, do they know if he died on impact or? I was told he died instantly. There's not much left. Oh, that's a shame. Dave, it's important that you guys don't land at the crash site. Okay. It's investigated there now. Thanks for informing us, Keith, and yeah, it's devastating news. We decide to continue to Weeper to refuel and head north to the crash site, hoping that we can make some sense of this tragedy. Flying over the crash site, there was very little left of the aircraft intact. At least the end for Ross would have been quick. Ross died doing what he loved in an extremely beautiful and peaceful part of Australia. Ross would have never forgiven us if we decided to call it quits, so we continue north to finish our trip to the tip of Australia. Here are just some of the highlights from our trip. <laughs>